All right, Michael, thank you very much. In the last, last half hour, we talked to TPS Superintendent Dr. Deborah Gist here in studio after a war of words, if you will, over Tulsa Public Schools. Joining us live now is State Superintendent Ryan Walters. Uh, sir, we thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me on. So, Superintendent, we got a, a lot to talk about. There's a lot been going on between the state and, and TPS, and we just want to, you know, ask it in, in the most general terms that we can and, and, and try to get some answers for parents here. What is the plan moving forward? You say you want to increase test scores, reading, math. What does that look like to you? You say you want to work with TPS leadership to make that happen. What is your vision there? Sure, absolutely. You know, I heard the superintendent talk a lot this morning about me. I didn't hear her talk a lot about Tulsa kids, and this has been part of the problem. We've seen Tulsa public schools from 2018, they had 21% of students reading proficient. Now they have 12%. Tulsa public schools is on a bad trajectory. It's time we put Tulsa kids first, emphasize reading for every kid. We're launching a statewide reading initiative, the biggest in state history this year, so that the entire state has access to the science of reading for every teacher. Every kid has remediation in reading. Every parent can log in and see how their kids are doing and see the path to get them to reading on grade level. And yet we see Tulsa with no realistic plan of how to get there. We see financial mismanagement going on in the district, a million dollars that's been misappropriated and misspent. And we have three consecutive audits in a row that say that TPS lacks the internal controls to oversee their finances. Money's not getting to the classroom. Money's not getting to teachers. They had over 26% of their teachers leave last year. What we see is a district that is not providing um, opportunities for success for kids. And so we have to do this. The most vulnerable Tulsa kids are not receiving the education they deserve. And real change has to take place in order for that to happen. And when you're talking about that financial mismanagement, that $1 million in missing funds, what are those missing dollars that you were talking about? Uh, Dr. Gist was saying that she isn't quite sure. Can you give us some clarity on that? Yeah, she's not quite sure because they're not keeping their records. They're not keeping their books. They're also not giving financial disclosures over to the board. They're not creating detailed reports. We have over four. Th we have around four hundred thousand dollars that has been allegedly embezzled by an employee. We have over six hundred thousand dollars that's unaccounted for with no type of records that they're not sure where that the money has gone. And what we begin, what we see is an unserious superintendent. We see an unserious board. I mean, yesterday I go to Tulsa. I lay out those three changes. I want a real plan on reading. We've got a real plan for the state. TPS needs a real plan. I need a real plan on how do you get schools off the F list. I need a real plan of how do you actually ensure financial stability. And what do we see? They take a vote to put $170,000 to buy more tampons for the school and claim that will improve academic success. It is an un unserious majority of the board there, and it is a very unserious superintendent. So, Superintendent, where are you getting these numbers from? I mean, the superintendent says that she is not sure. She's handed it over to the authorities. Where are these 600 and 400 coming from in your office? Where, where are these documents at? Yeah, it's in her own audit reports. I mean, it, it, this is an unserious superintendent. We have multiple audits from her districts. We have her claiming she doesn't keep records on these things. We have when board members request information, they either get told no or they get told, well, we don't keep track of that. I can easily go into every other large district and see where every dollar is spent, whether it's a contract with a vendor, whether it's a contract in, inside the um, uh, uh, school. These are all really easy to see, except for one district that doesn't keep these kind of financial records, Tulsa Public Schools. So it is not a coincidence that their auditors have told them for three straight years they lack internal controls and then they can't provide records on where money is going. You know, school is starting here in the next uh, two weeks for Tulsa Public Schools. And uh, the meeting, the State Board of Education meeting to vote on the accreditation status is the 24th. So we know we've moved this meeting once. So what is the delay in this meeting? And, you know, the fact that the outcome of that meeting could really impact these schools after the school year has already started. So can you explain to me the delay of that meeting and has your decision been made? Yeah, thank you for that question. No, the decision has not been made. What we had is information that came to light before the board meeting about the lack of information being given over by Tulsa Public Schools, the lack of, of clarity on how much money has been misspent, where are the records of the, these funds. And so we put the accreditation on pause so that we could do a deep dive. We've requested uh, several dozen documents from the district that they've begun turning over to us for us to do a deep dive on. And here's the reality. We're going to do whatever we can to improve Tulsa public schools for these Tulsa kids. The kids deserve it. Tulsans deserve it. The town deserves it. Most importantly, 
every single child should have an opportunity of success. So we're mulling over every single option available. We're going to put Tulsa kids first, and we want every single child in Tulsa to have the opportunity to be successful. And unfortunately, not only are they not getting that in Tulsa, their trajectory over the last seven years under superintendent guest leadership has continued to get worse. We have to see change. No action is unacceptable. We will ensure that these students are getting a better education. And so you say your decision has not been made. That uh, meeting's coming up pretty soon here. Is there a future in your mind of working with Dr. Deborah Gist to make things better? Or is your decision on that leadership final? Hey, look, you know, I am always, you know, again, I came to Tulsa yesterday and talked and, and spoke directly to the board of give me, look, we want to see a serious plan here. We want to see a change, of course. She's been there seven years. We haven't seen it. But but that's that's again, that was my plea yesterday for that board. But be serious, be serious and give Tulsa's hope that this district. Hey, look, I'm just asking them to be average. I, I said, hey, guys, by the end of the year, can we just get to the state average uh, on reading? But you know what? My actual goal for Tulsa is to be exceptional, to not only be one of the best districts in the state, be a, be a leader. That's what Tulsans deserve. And that's what we asked for the board to do. And again, the board was more concerned with, with, with items like buying more tampons and they were a serious plan. And that's where we have to get serious in Tulsa about the public schools there from the board, from the superintendent. We want to see these plans. That's where I've told them, let put together a serious plan to improve the schools. You know, a lot of parents are wondering about, you know, the future of their kids in Tulsa Public Schools. You refer to um, the Texas Education Agency, uh, the case happening in Houston. Is that are you referring to them taking over uh, the school district there? Look, all options are on the table. I mean, we're willing to do whatever we need to do to ensure that Tulsa's, uh, Tulsa's kids have a better education. And I've said, look, I was elected by the people of Oklahoma to improve this education system. Tulsa parents can know I will do everything in my power to ensure that their kids' schools are better, their education is better. I want them to be excited about going back to school. I want them to know that their kids are getting an education that allows them to go into the economy, into the world, and be able to have the life that they want for themselves. And so I'm going to do everything in my power to ensure that, that every single kid in the state, especially right now as we're talking about Tulsa, every single child in Tulsa has that opportunity. For future planning, you know, if if the school, if the, the board were to decide, you know, maybe this is something that this state uh, education department would do. Do you all have the staff to take over the largest school district? Look, here, here's the thing. Right now, what we're doing is we're going over every single option. We're looking at how would this improve education? How would this improve reading? You know, reading is what we've hyper focused on. The statistics are really, really clear. You have to have kids reading on grade level by fourth grade. We have over 15 school elementary schools and TPS that have less than 5% reading proficiency. I mean, less than 5% of the kids are reading on grade level in the grade schools there. I mean, this has to be corrected. It's not a 10 year plan. It's not a 15 year plan. There has to be significant strides made this year or these kids will never get back on track academically. So we're looking through every single option available. How do we ensure that kids are reading on grade level, especially in these elementary schools, so that they have hope, so that they have the ability to improve their educational uh, you know, achievement. And so that's, that's our focus. So yeah, we're gonna look at every single category and every single option, but we are gonna be solution oriented here and we're gonna make sure these kids have that opportunity. All right, State Superintendent Ryan Walters, we appreciate you uh, joining us and we look forward to speaking with you in the future as well. Thank you. All right, let's get back to our uh, back to school coverage.